So we're here at the historic Behringer Winery with Michelle Branch. Hey. Hi. Hi. How's your day been so far? It's It's been pretty much the perfect day. I woke up, I had some coffee and a muffin, and I drove up here to the Behringer Winery and uh, got to play some songs and drink wine with friends and take a tour of of the facilities and it's been pretty much a fantastic day and it's all going to end with us eating um, a catered lunch in here in this old house by the fire. So You performed one of the new songs, I I'm assuming it's on your new record, you've got a yes. new album coming out, West Coast Time, early next year yes. and you performed one of the songs today that you said you wrote for your husband. It yes. was really beautiful. Thank Tell you. us a little bit more about that song. Yeah, there's a song called For Dear Life that I wrote on um, for my new album and uh, my husband and I have been together eight years, married seven years and since we first started dating I was just like I want to write a song for him and nothing seemed, nothing, every time I went to write a song it, it just seemed so cheesy and um, disingenuous so I finally, finally uh, we were, I was working in London on this album and he was home with my daughter and this song just kind of came out of the sky and landed in my lap and I wrote it really quickly and and so I finally wrote a, a song for my husband Teddy and it's called For Dear Life and, and I'm excited for people to hear it. Is it difficult to write a romantic song for someone that you <laughs> live with all the time and they hog the TV and they hog the bathroom mirror? <laughs> it's difficult to get in that headspace. It's, it's, I'm, a, I'm a hopeless romantic so it's not difficult necessarily to write a romantic song but it's difficult to write when you know the person uh, who you're writing it about will hear it and that you care for them you want it to be you want it to be able to express everything you're trying to convey and mm -hmm. so that's that's why, why I think it took so long for me to write it. <laughs> I've always been curious about this um, when artists like yourself write a song for someone specific how do you share it with them because for me I'm really shy so I would think that would be awkward but how did you share that song with him for the first time? It's a little awkward I'm not gonna lie um, I came home from London and and I said, you know, we have a batch of new songs. I want to play them for you. And I played it first. And I said, what do you think about that song? He's like, it's great. I love that song. I was like, it's, it's about you. <laughs> He's like, really? Okay. Uh -huh. So um, it, I, I didn't bring it up until after I played it. So, and now he hears it all the time. Tell me about some of the other songs on the new project. And I understand as an artist, they are all your babies. You've labored over each yeah. and every one of them. But are there any songs in particular at this moment in time you're closer to on the album? Yeah, I'm, uh, there's certain songs that were very therapeutic for me to get out, so I enjoy performing them and listening to them for those reasons because it's very cathartic for me to get it out. Um, there's a song called The Story of Us, and it's a song I wrote um, about a, a friend of mine, and, and it was really... Um, is really therapeutic to get that song out and so I, I listen to it and I'm like yeah <laughs> here you go so I I mean I'm gonna have a heart attack when she hears that song because I don't I don't want oh, she it. hasn't heard it yet she hasn't heard that song I don't know what she's gonna think of it um, so that's a that's a song on the new record that I'm really fond of and this song for my husband is probably one of my favorites mm, fantastic and do you have any idea when the album's gonna be released no idea. <laughs> no clue. Well, we'll definitely keep everybody posted on that as yeah. we get um, more details on that. You spent a time in the world of country music, yes. and now you're, you're back in the pop music world. But I'm curious how that shaped your songwriting. Is it, it different now? It definitely it, it influenced me in, a, in an enormous way. Um, I, I really used to kind of... I was really in... I write by myself and I never really let anyone in on the creative process and was very kind of secretive about it and when I moved to Nashville there was this um, there was such a sense of community there mm -hmm. and a lot of my close friends uh, who I started who I started spending a lot of time with were songwriters and that's how they made their living and they you know would have sometimes one or two sessions a day and they would just whether they felt like writing or not they'd show up and they'd they'd write and I just found that uh, so fascinating and uh, kind of um, jumped into that world and and really learned that okay wait a minute I'm, I'm a lazy songwriter if I don't if something isn't kind of 
naturally forming in my head. I don't push it, but it, it really showed me that if I want to, I can sit down and force myself to be creative. And, and sometimes you come up with something that's fantastic. Um, and then I, I, I think the biggest thing I learned from Nashville is, is how to kind of be a more well-rounded storyteller. Um, it's all about the song and all about the lyric there. And um, I was really fortunate to work with some fantastic writers down there who really taught me a lot. So I think I've I think my writing has changed for the better because of it. I hope so. Anyway. Are there any great stories to tell that are still in your head and not yet in song form that you're at some point going to write a song about and share oh, with I'm, us? I'm constantly, constantly. I, I mean, if if you saw like the bottom of my purse is strewn with like receipts with like half lyrics on it, um, I, I constantly have songs going through my head, and some of them are a day old some of them are years old where I'm like I'm gonna finish this one day and you never know which one is gonna rise to the top you have a young daughter and you were very young when you broke onto the music scene how do you think that your experiences um, being so young and, and entering the working world like that how, how, do you think that's affected you as a mom and how you raise her that's a good question um, you're the first to ask ask that question um, I feel like the biggest lesson that I'm, I'm hoping my daughter will learn from my experience is that if you're passionate about something, um, that you can achieve anything you want. And I, I had everyone tell me that it was impossible to be a, a professional singer-songwriter who was well-known for a living. You know, I went to high school and everyone said, Michelle, you need to come up with a backup plan. This is not going to work. So I was planning on going to Berklee College of Music and maybe being a school music teacher or something. I had no idea what would happen, but I was, I, I would come home from, I would be writing songs in class. I'd come home from school. I'd go to my room. I'd write songs. I was just obsessed. It's the only thing I could, I could really focus on. And, and I would really hope that, um, as she gets older, that no matter what she ends up doing, that it's something that she eats, sleeps, drinks, breathes, that it's the only thing that she can think about doing. I don't care what it is as long as she has that passion. Is she showing any signs of having <laughs> inherited mom's music genes or she, DNA? Owen can carry a tune for sure and she sings and she's very appreciative of music. Um, but she's actually, which makes my husband and I laugh, she's very academic. She loves she goes to her room and she breaks out science books and she loves schoolwork and she loves going to the museum so we're like watch she's gonna end up being like a rocket scientist or something and her two slacker parents who are musicians we're awesome. gonna be like what she'll be financing your records i know she's she's <laughs> she's always um she wants to know how everything works and why and and so she asks she asks the questions that my husband and I never did at her age. One last Michelle as mom question, because I'm a mom too, and I know that kids have this just uncanny way of at the least expected time, yes. busting something out that embarrasses you oh, in yes. front of everyone. Yeah. When was the last time your child did that to you? Um, hourly? No, <laughs> um, my daughter, uh, she's, she's grown up on a tour bus, pretty much, and she lived... Uh, from the time she was four weeks old until I mean through throughout the summer she's been on a tour bus pretty you know pretty consistently and there's a lot of like cursing <laughs> from the boys the, the crew boys the band boys and I'm like watch your language watch your language and uh, it's getting to the point where um, my daughter was doing something the other day and she stubbed her toe and she said s-h-i-t really loud and everyone kind of looked at her like, wait a minute. And she's like, what? Mom and dad say it. And Oops. so the cursing thing, we we started a swear jar at our house that we have to put money in every time we swear. So we're trying to watch our language <laughs> around her. Well, Michelle, thank you so much for taking a few minutes to talk to us. And we're very much looking forward to your album. Keep us posted on your album, yes. West Coast Time, when if, it's going to be released. Yeah, if you follow me on Twitter, that's pretty much where I tell every moment of my life so that's probably where you'll first hear news of of the release date well we're very excited about it and, and hope to get you back to portland sometime Thank soon you.